Our Father's Arms, nestled in the beautiful foothills of Appalachia in the southeastern United States and northeast Alabama, Our Father's Arms is a place of healing and deliverance. Each day, we turn our hearts toward God's Word. There's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs, one for each day of the month. The proverb for the day provides a springboard and commentary to the rest of Scripture. We invite you to join us as we relax, open our Bibles, and trust Him to speak to our hearts. There's still storms. There's still heartbreak. There's still times when I wonder why. But now I set my face into the wind. Spread my wings and know I'm about to fly higher because I'm free. Free as the wind. Soaring like an eagle with my friend. I'm free. Yes, I'm free. Free as the wind. Love is lifting me. The truth is setting me free. Thank God I'm as free as the wind. He, he, made, he made a way. And I pray, if you haven't already, that you will find that way. Someone's constantly calling to talk with me in my head. This is George. Hey, George. And this is Bob. Hey, Bob. And together we're George and George. Bob, the GBs. <laughs> Someone's constantly calling to talk with me in my head. May be a friend with the words of life. May be a foe who's a wanting me dead. You ever wonder where your thoughts come from? Well, if you've been sitting around wondering where your thoughts come from, I'd encourage you to get a job. <laughs> So I was in between jobs wondering where my thoughts were coming from. Someone's constantly calling to talk with me in my head. May be a friend with the words of life. May be a foe who's a wanting me dead. Well, thank God for his technology. I can choose who will let talk to me. Every thought captive to the truth that'll set you free. Thank God, thank God, thank God. For caller ID. Caller ID. God's way of protecting me. God's way of protecting me. Caller ID. Caller ID. I can answer the phone. I can answer the phone or I can leave it alone. Or I can leave it alone. No more soul selling. Soul selling. God rebelling. God rebelling. Aggravating. Aggravated. Agitating. Agitated. Messed up. Messed up. Stressed out. Stressed out. Full of doubt. Full of doubt. Pest. Pest. 
A pester in me. A pester in me. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Oh yeah. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Oh yeah. Thank God, thank God, thank God for the caller ID. Now we we'll do that course again. I want you to, to uh, follow Joy, George on the echo, okay? When you're laying there at night and those thoughts come into your mind, and you know what you're thinking? You're thinking, I must be a horrible person to have thoughts like that. So I just start rejecting myself for those thoughts, and those thoughts are not me. It's the father of lies disguising himself as me. Shooting those fiery darts of the wicked. You read about it in the caller ID right there in Ephesians 6. It's called the fiery darts of the wicked. The father of lies, there's no truth in him. Accusing them before God night and day. Revelation says that. So I'm being accused in the middle of the night thinking what all that toxic stuff. Now listen, please listen. You can't stop it. Brother Bob, would you pray, pray with me that the devil would leave me alone? No. How are you going to overcome if there's not an adversary to overcome? How are you going to win a gold medal in the Olympics of the hurdles if they move the hurdle in practice? God lets the adversary be the adversary in order that you may overcome. We in an overcoming school. It ain't survival, it's overcoming. That's when the devil becomes your servant. So you lay in there and these fiery darts of the wicked are coming at your head. There's something called the shield of faith. There's faith in the truth. The way you pick that thing up is two words. What are they? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you therapy. No greater words of thank you. Who brought a Bible this morning? Did somebody bring their Bible this morning? Raymond, would you find uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 and I'll just have it ready, brother. Sort of like a cock pistol. Just have that thing ready. <laughs> now, every Calvary has a resurrection. Say that with me. Every Calvary has a resurrection. I used to dread and hate those toxic, evil thoughts that would come at my mind until I realized every one of those thoughts is a Calvary. I used to dread waking up in the morning because those demons are there waiting on me. Now those demons dread me waking up. Because I ain't fighting it alone anymore. Well, I don't feel like it. Doesn't matter what I feel like. I'm not putting faith in feelings. I'm putting faith in fact and feelings will follow. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, there in 2 Corinthians 10, he says, the weapons of our warfare are divinely powerful and tearing down strongholds, casting down imaginations, any high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Philippians 2 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, loving, of good report, if there's any virtue, any praise, set your mind on these things. You got anxiety? Well, it's right there in that letter that guy, that innocent man that was locked up wrote 2,000 years ago, not get me out of here, I've been framed. He said, I got an epistle of joy. I want to tell you, tell you about how to walk in joy. I've, I've been up, I've been down, I've had, I've had not, and I've learned to be content in whatever situation I find myself in. <laughs> Even locked up in this old nasty cell and they sharpening the guillotine and I can hear them out there, they're gonna chop my head off. Well, I ain't never had that done before. <laughs> Let's see what that's like. <laughs> so what do you do with those thoughts? Just like a prospector panning for gold. I pocket the truth of the word. Let the evil lies go. Jesus lives in me. And he's saving my soul as he sets me free. But he's a helping me pay attention to the caller ID. Caller ID. Caller ID. 
It's God's way of protecting me. Caller ID. Caller ID. Well, I can answer the phone. Or I can leave it alone. All right, now help George out on this, okay? No more soul selling. Soul selling. God rebelling. God rebelling. Aggravating. Aggravating. Agitating. Agitating. Messed up. Messed up. Stressed out. Stressed out. Full of doubt. Full of doubt. Pest. Pest. A pester me. A pester in me. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for the color. that cup right there, will you? <laughs> you know, when I set that cup down there, you can see George's smiling face on it. Yeah. Can't see it now. It's, 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 it's still there. there. It's still there, yeah. Had that hot coffee in it, you can see him smiling at me. That's one great way to start the day in it, see George smiling at you. Yeah. And it comes gradual, you know, it's not all at once. And then it fades out again, you know, and that's the way our physical life is. I don't see him, but he's still here. I got word 30 minutes ago, my spiritual, one of our sons, our father's arms, lived with us. Love him, love his family, and and uh, buried his dad a couple of years ago, but I have such fond memories of, of uh, Tyler and his dad out at Duggar Mountain Music Hall hearing the song, When God Ran, and it's about the prodigal son, that, it says that when God ran, he ran for a son that was coming home. <laughs> and that father and that son embracing crime because he'd come home. And I didn't see Johnny anymore. They said he died. I'm learning not to give a whole lot of credibility to what they say. That's right. I'm going to go with what God says. He says, you believe in me, you never die. That don't sound like dying to me. Nope. Tyler's mom found him last night in his bed. But it wasn't him, it was his body. He got set free from his body. When it's time to put this guitar down, lay these remains in the ground, sure be blessed with this one request, would you bury me in my pocket tees and jeans, you know? <laughs> that ain't him. I had a here for a spill it. And I, I don't like cold coffee. <laughs> Thank you, George. That's a great reminder right there. Let me tell you what that reminds you to do: enjoy each other. You say, "Well, I, I don't like being around that person." You know, look. You pray for that person. Don't don't go condemning somebody God sent into your life to lift up and pray for. That's what you woke, wake up in the night. Somebody's hurt your feelings or something. That's it. That's somebody that hurt your feelings. Listen, that, that's somebody that doesn't know they're loved. Well, why don't you let them run into the Jesus in you to find out they're loved? Amen. A love that doesn't take into account a wrong suffered. A love that doesn't seek its own. Lay your life down, no hook in it, forgive and love. And I don't love you because of what you did or didn't do. I love you because I can't help it. Because He first loved me. And all my selfish and toxic personality and bad moods and swings and all that. I mean, they call me, I was bipolar before they named it. <laughs> Stretch out on this couch, open up your mind, dig back into your past, it's analyzing time. You just might be a schizophrenic, masochistic and sadistic too. If they don't know what to call you, any $10 word will do. <laughs> Well, you can pickle your brain with booze, you can smoke your head with grass, you can get you a case of religion, child, but none of that junk will last. You can bury your head in the sand, bet your life on some retirement plan, but in the final analysis, the only thing that matters is, do you know the man? And there's somebody coming, and God sent them into your life and let them come right there, not so that you'd blame the devil. Oh, and by the way, all these thoughts, I rebuke you, devil, my thoughts, you can sit there, all you're doing when you're rebuking the devil is you're just chasing them down the sidewalk. <laughs> Why don't you just relax and enjoy the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I'll tell you what you do. 
2 Corinthians 11.3 is a spiritual warfare verse. I mean, there's people making a lot of money demon busting and stuff like that out there. Giving credibility to somebody, to a liar, doesn't have any credibility. That's right. The way, the truth, and the life. Let's let him be center stage. 2 Corinthians 11, 3 said, I fear lest as the serpent beguiled or deceived Eve by his subtlety that your mind would be led astray from the simplicity and purity of the devotion to the person of Jesus. Come on. You sitting there arguing over the teachings of Jesus? Where's your, where's, that's, your mind's been led astray from the person of Jesus. I bind this devil, bind that devil, and name them, name them all kinds of stuff. You're devil conscious. You're darkness conscious. You're not light conscious. When he leads your mind astray, that's the only weapon the devil's got. Simplicity and purity is devotion to the person of Jesus. See, when you're walking in the light, you ain't worried about them. Because Colossians 2.15 says he, he deemed the devil powerless, made a public display of him openly, trying, oh, triumphing over him in the cross. Why am I fighting a defeated foe? That's right. What do we need to play at national championship again for 2018? <laughs> <laughs> it is finished. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, let me just tell you, you know and I know the real Crimson Tide just keeps rolling from a hill called Calvary. He's given life to some, but the other's just a stumbling block. The real Crimson Tide will roll forever. But here on planet Earth, it's late in the fourth and no one can stop the clock. <laughs> Glory to the Crimson Tide. The crimson blood is cleansing us and it's coming in like a tide. And the gates of hell will never prevail again. He's giving you and me a choice. We can be on the winning side, but those who refuse to lay their idols down will slowly die in their sin. Yes. Can't you see them filling up the Roman Colosseum, slowly dying in what they call their sugar bowl? And all the while, the real crimson tide just keeps rolling from a hill called Calvary. He's giving life to some, but to others just a stumbling block. And the real crimson tide will roll forever. But here on planet Earth, it's late in the fourth and no one can stop the clock. When I watch the, the games and everything, I, I'm more interested in the, in the human nature stories behind the scoreboard. <clears throat> that precious kid that missed that field goal. That, that, last, that last field goal. He had a chance to win the national championship game 36 <coughs> yards out. And he missed it. Well, my heart went out to him. I said, I just praying for him, lifting him up, you know, because you got 90,000 people mm. and you out there doing your thing miss. and you miss it. Well, if he hadn't have missed it, guess what wouldn't have happened? That little old Hawaiian quarterback, I don't know if I'll ever remember his name. <laughs> 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 that little old Hawaiian quarterback gets up there and you know what he does? He testifies to the whole world, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, that's why he missed that field goal. <laughs> Come on. There's, there's stuff going on behind the scenes. And God meets people where they are, you know, even fighting over a bag full of zipped up air, grown men getting down like billy goats, making a big deal out of it, you know, <laughs> kissing the trophy and everything else, you know. But behind the scene, there's human interest stories. Let me just tell you what the real Jesus does. He meets people where we are. Yeah. He'll even meet you in a mosque. Amen. Yes, he will. He'll meet you in that bar down there. Yeah. Have you seen Jesus? That was him under a veil crying in Afghanistan. He's a father, he's a mother, he's a child, he's a woman, he's a man. You can find him behind prison bars or sometimes under a steeple. You can find Him anywhere you are, living and loving through all kinds of people, yeah. precious people. Have you seen Jesus? Now let me tell you something precious about the real Jesus. He's here in the person of His Holy Spirit. Eschatology, that's a that big word, talking about the second coming of Christ, and we're going to get raptured before the tribulation, all that. Look, leave that to the experts. I want to tell you what I'm personally interested in. I want to get to know Him now who's come to live in me. He's going to take care of all that fullness of time and a lot of that symbolic stuff, you know. And I, but I've done come like a child. And I'll tell you, you know where I'm settling it from here on out? Jesus loves me. This I'm beginning to know. So every theologian's missed it because they're trying to explain something can't be explained. 
Mystery is a footstool upon which faith kneels and it's mysterious and it's glorious and I just love it. I just love it. it isn't it wonderful? How are you going to have reverence and honor and all by God you can get in your back pocket and understand? Well, I read it the third day of the month. He says, don't lean on your own understanding. <laughs> but trust Him and He'll direct your path. And that's what we're learning to do. We're learning to trust Him. That's so amazing. So amazing. This incredible walk of salvation, of getting to know the Lord Jesus Christ who is totally inconsiderate of your behavior. <coughs> yeah, but I did this and I did that. Look what He did at Calvary one day. Are you going to believe a lie that says that's not enough for you? Then go ahead and lick your wounds and talk about what a sorry no good sinner you are and bow your head and unworthy and all that crap. And that's exactly what it is. In fact, Paul says that in Philippians. He said, anything but knowing Jesus is a bunch of crap. King James says dung. Well, we, got, we, got re we really cleaned it up. And some of those translations call it rubbish. No, he said it's a bunch of crap. Anything but knowing Him is that. Or I want to get to know Him because it's in knowing Him that we escape the corruption of the world. Believe me, addiction's part of that. So we're learning to get to know Him and we get to know Him by learning to trust Him. And that's what we gather here on our Wednesday mornings for an hour is to pay attention to the caller ID and to come to the light. Now here's one of the things that the Holy Spirit of God does not do. He does not say shame on you ever. He never reacts. Why would He? He's in control. He's causing all things to work the counsel of His will. That's in Ephesians 1.11. If you wake up in the middle of the, uh, uh, early in the morning and you look over at your digital clock, it's got 111 and you go right back to sleep, that's the Holy Spirit reminding you of Ephesians 1.11. He's causing all things to work to the counsel of His will. What's the storm you're going through now? He's causing all things to work to the counsel of His will. Even miss field goals. The Holy Spirit never reacts. So if someone is reacting, if I'm reacting, fearfully reacting, I'm not being led by the Spirit. That's right. That's right. The Spirit of God never reacts. Here's what He does. Oh, sometimes in the Old Testament, He's referred to in the feminine gender. First time you see the Holy Spirit, she's brooding over the face of the deep like a mother to give birth to creation. Don't give me this women or second class stuff. There's, there's a mother heart of God right there. Nurturing and protect and feeding and guiding and protecting from Father's wrath, which is a certain judgment that comes. All right. So, so the mother heart of God, and he, she, we're not making a sexual thing out of it. It's just, it's just beautiful to realize that the Holy Spirit is here to guide you in all truth. And in John 16, it says, convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment of sin because they don't believe in me. I love that's in John 16. He said, Jesus, my spirit's going to come. My spirit's not separate from me. My spirit is me. Mystery. Neil, faith. Wow. Try to explain it if you want to. I'd just rather, I'd rather quit analyzing it and just get in on it. That's right. It's, it's called overcoming. And we, and, we, and we live in this perpetual, wow, word of worship. Wow, life, miracles all around us. God, what's this love in my heart? I don't know. I'm just going to let it flow. I'm not going to wait until I understand it. I'm not going to wait until I understand electricity before I turn on the lights. I'm not going to sit there in the dark because I don't understand it. I don't know how this digestive system works, but if you put a steak in front of me, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> so we don't understand it, but we just start coming to the light and we wake up to this wonderful love of God and He's not <coughs> reacting. Fear reacts because you feel threatened. So if you find yourself reacting, God wants to reprogram the way you think where you won't be reacting anymore. The Holy Spirit never reacts. The Holy Spirit always either does one or two things, waits patiently, or responds in love. Now sometimes that waiting patiently is you've got this incredible hedge of mercy around you. Would you, would you like... Would you like to start getting what you deserve? If justice and judgment were served right now because of your past behavior that's a result of the thoughts that you entertain, uh, where would you be? 
You know, are, 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 are you ready to realize what a rotten, self-centered sinner you are and how you've destroyed yourself and other people and what you did to your family? No, it's, it's not pretend I didn't do that. You're guilty. Would you get... Listen, if I'm pointing to you saying guilty, then I'm not looking in the mirror to see my own. That you without sin cast the first stone. Shame on you. Shame on me. Shame on this whole sin-cursed world and everything we see. We need more education. Become more civilized. Go ahead and take sides. Criticize. Demonize. Maybe it's time I realized all of us fall short. That's right. All God's children got warts. <laughs> Front row, back row, pulpit and pew, all sorts of warts, more than a few. <laughs> warts on me and warts on you too. We all fall short and all God's children got warts. Did you know the greatest fault is in finding fault? with no mercy shown. Preach, Bob. The Master says, let you without sin cast the first stone. Yes. We all fall short. All God's children got warts. Front row, back row, pulpit and pew. All sorts of warts, more than a few. <coughs> warts on me and warts on you too. All God's children got warts. But listen, it ain't about the warts. It's about the healer that comes to take the warts away. That's right. And we got to let him. If they're going to roll you in there for open heart surgery over at UAB in Birmingham and everything, <laughs> would you let me stay awake so I can tell this surgeon how to do it? <laughs> Mama, get in here and keep an eye on him. <laughs> Are you ready to just spread out? And say, all that I am, all that I have, all that I hope to be in the mess that I've made in this cobweb I selfishly got myself in, I can't get out of. This incredible train wreck called my life. I'm all yours. Best I know how, Lord Jesus. I'm not going to try to do better. I'm going to die to try. Because if you don't do it, it don't get done. That's when it starts getting done. So I quit trying to talk him out of loving me. Because he ain't going to listen. He won't pay you no mind. I even tried to talk him out of loving me. He said, child, stop wasting my time. <laughs> now you look at that blood-soaked cross and you tell him he doesn't love you. And if you'll let him, here's what happens. Back to John 16. He said, I'm going to send the Spirit who says, it's to your advantage that I go away physically in one body. Because when you tear there in Jerusalem, I'm going to send this the day of Pentecost. I'm going to send my spirit. My spirit's me. But I want to tell you why it's to your advantage. I'm confined by my own physical laws into one body right now. And now I'm going to take off and I'm going to get born in every one of you that'll let me. It had been better for... All right, it says, John the Baptist had never been a greater man born of woman than John the Baptist, but those who are least in the kingdom is greater than he. Something happened at Pentecost that day that totally changed everything for the human race and planet Earth. That's when Jesus Christ came by His Spirit to live inside of you and me and any and every human being with a copyrighted thumbprint. It doesn't matter if you want a billions. There's never been one like you. He loves you like His only child. He's been drawing you to Him ever since you were conceived. Now here's what you do. You quit resisting Him. And let Him love you. And now you're getting to know someone who's, who loves you with a love that's greater than your selfishness. Now I promise you, quit making a fool out of yourself telling yes. Him how bad you are. <laughs> okay. Okay, now here's, and here's what happens. I saw the Pope holding one end of a rope. On the other end, Martin Luther pulling and protesting on a sour note. Who's to bless? Who's to blame? Some confess, some complain. 
Is there any sense to this insane tug of tug of war? Tug of tug of war. Tug of war. Tell me what are we doing this for? Tug of war. Tug of war. Roll up your sleeves, join the fight. Strain and groan with all of your might. Somebody here's just gotta be right in this tug of tug of war. A tug of tug of war. Well, at the end of another rope, I saw an elephant instead of the Pope. On the left was a liberal donkey pulling and pushing me to the poles, telling me how to vote. Oh. Who's to bless? Who's to blame? Some filibuster, others complain. Is there any sense to this insane tug of tug of war? A tug of tug of war. As eternity quietly waits, the fragile little man-made rope is about to break. Tug of war. Tell me what are we doing this for? Tug of war. Tug of war. Roll down your sleeves. Get out of the fight. Come out of the darkness and into the light. Everybody's wrong. Jesus is right. Forsake the tug of tug of war. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and get to know me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And you'll find rest for your soul. No more tug of tug of war. No more tug of tug of war. I'm going to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, and I'm going to roll down my sleeves. Get out of the fight. If the Holy Spirit's not reacting, why am I reacting? Because I'm not following the Holy Spirit. So, I'm willing to. I can't walk in light I don't have. And here comes the light. Well, I'm going to come to the light. You know what that means? That means walking with a repentant heart. You show the way I'm coming. And that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is coming to the light. And foolishness is refusing to come to the light. Now here's what happened. It's so precious. Uh, the Holy Spirit, who's come to convince, convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, back to John 16, he said, of sin because they don't believe in me. That's a very interesting... He, the Holy Spirit is here to convince or convict or reveal sin, righteousness, and judgment of sin because they don't believe in me. Don't believe what? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The one by whom and for whom everything was made in heaven and earth. The almighty, sovereign, ruler, creator of God humbled himself and came into planet earth through the womb of a virgin. And that's what we call the Christmas story and all that stuff. And, all right, and then he became the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Or y'all, uh, you didn't get offended, did you? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Go in peace. We'll turn them loose in about 30 minutes. Okay, convicts were sin, righteous, and judgment. You can watch this on the internet. Pick up the rest of it because you don't want to miss it. The Holy Spirit is here to convince, convict, to reveal to you sin. The self-indulgent nature you were born with. There's your warts. All right, you can't help it. You were selfish. You were sinful. You were hurting yourself. You were destroying other people. You know, because you can't help it. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. You could not help if you were born a crack baby. And some of you might have been. Well, you were. Every human being is born a crack baby. Corrupt rebellion against Christ's kingdom. And that baby could not help being born that way. It doesn't mean God made me this way because I was born this way. 
God didn't make me a sinner. Or so many other things where, where that's released that, that interferes with nature. Whether it be sexual things, and listen, if the parts don't fit, it ain't designed to be that way. So we'll just keep on going with that. All the perversion against nature. That's what sin is. You know, if you overeat stuff you got, it'll clog up your arteries and kill you and everything. You know, fill, fill your lungs with toxic fumes from burning leaves when they were designed for oxygen. You're interfering with nature, and there's consequences. And those consequences is called the wrath of God that's on all disobedience. So we're all born with that total self centered, addictive, destructive, horrible personality, the self indulgent nature, sin. And the consequence of sin is death. All right, then he comes. And he doesn't come into the planet to teach us a nice little seminar and say, now you go be good kids and quit acting like a crack baby like you are. Leave your drug alone, then you can be right with me. Get in church, get clean, quit smoking, cussing, chewing, and hanging out with people that do. Come, you know, don't do all that, and then I'll accept you. I promise you, one thing the Holy Spirit never, ever, ever says is you've got to do something to be right with God. That's right. It's what He did, not what you do. Or quit doing now, when you turn your focus away from you and you look to Him, you cannot question His unfailing love for you. Now, this is what's going to set you free. I've sinned because they don't believe in me. Believe what? Believe what the Word incarnate in flesh is saying at a cross. And He's saying, I love you. And the only reason you're living a selfish life is because you don't know it. But now here comes the light. The light to you, privately, you. There's a shepherd you need. Every human being needs. Are you willing to let him love you and to be willing to follow his light and to do it his way? Well, if you're not willing, now see, you can't help it until you see the light. If you see the light, now you've got to act. Now what the Holy Spirit does oftentimes in, in His patience, her patience, His patience, is, is he, will, he will lower the hedge of mercy and let you and me get a little bit of what we deserve. Justice, judgment. Not all of it or we'd be hopelessly in hell forever. But this is the discipline of the Lord that brings you to Him. The wrath of God is not vengeance is consequence <laughs> you cannot you cannot defy and break any of the ten commandments and get by with it well i hadn't committed adultery if you lust in your mind you have well i've never murdered anybody if you hate them in your mind you have it's all about a state of the heart and he comes and he's revealing to you the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's in Hebrews 4.12. The Word of God is sharper and active in your two-edged sword, revealing the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now this is privately and personally between you and him. Are you willing to come to the light? Well, if you are, you're about to overcome Amen. by the blood of the Lamb, the word of the testimony, living not your own selfish earthly life even unto death. Okay, now today's Proverbs 10. It's the 10th day of January 2018. And the, the verse we're going to concentrate on today and look at is beginning with verse uh, 24. The fear of the wicked will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. Now, re remember, the, the proverb for the day becomes a springboard and commentary of the rest of Scripture. Now, anytime you see desire, remember, and you can write it in the margin right there of uh, Psalm 37.4. He says, delight yourself in the Lord and He gives you the desires of your heart. He even says, don't fret over evildoers. <clears throat> what Jesus said would happen is happening. Yeah. Headlines read like Matthew chapter 24. What Jesus said would happen is happening. So what are we complaining and blaming the politicians for? Yeah. Fret not. Are you fretting? Well, He said, don't do that. And He says, if you'll delight yourself in the Lord, He's going to give you the desires of your heart and you're not going to be fretting over evil doers because you're going to be so light conscious, darkness is just passing away. And I'll tell you, the real Jesus is not taking sides, He's taking over, so there's nothing to quarrel about. <laughs> so here, come, here comes the light and the light comes in you and the light begins to shine you know, through the storms of your life in, into others. Okay, but this, uh, and your desires will be granted because here's what happens. When you start delighting yourself in the Lord, then He gives you the desires of your heart 
and the desire of your heart becomes him. Okay, now, the Amplified Bible, and when you're studying, it's really good to look at other translations and everything. It says the expectation of the wicked brings wrath. Okay, so it's, it's a, that's a commentary that we saw right here in 10, uh, 24. The fear of the wicked will come upon them because it's the fear of the wicked that brings it. When you anticipate death and destruction, you get it, and it's your anticipation that's bringing it on you. You can blame everybody else. You can blame mama, daddy, that orphanage, that person that raped you when you was a baby. You, you can blame anybody and everybody else. When your anticipator is calibrated toward hell and destruction, you get it because you're expecting it. And Psalm 23 becomes yours. Now, do you think you'll go out of here with a different attitude if you, if you came in here whining, complaining, and blame shifting, anticipating destruction because you didn't realize it, but you're wicked, calling God a liar because He doesn't love you? All right, now you're ready to come out of the darkness into the light. You're moving from wickedness. I believe, help thou my unbelief. And He said, I am, if you'll just let me. And you just keep coming to the light and keep doing your thank you therapy. And He said, and as you do this, as you do this, I'm going to reveal to you a shepherd it's not reason, it's revelation. You're starting to wake up to see the unseen and God Almighty is your advocate. He's your shepherd. And you anticipate being led by still waters. You anticipate getting your soul restored. You anticipate He prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemy so you're not scared of Him no more. And now you're listening to Him. Now watch this. He transforms and renews your mind and he recalibrates your anticipator. And just because you got beat up, well, I get beat up again and I deserve it. And I'm like, no, no, stop it. It's time that you cast down imaginations, bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, and you start doing your thank you therapy for him being your shepherd because of what? His, his behavior, not yours. Okay, and you're starting to come to the light and you're walking with a humble, repentant heart because all you want to do is <coughs> please him and you're delighting in him and he's giving you the desires of your heart, which is the desire for him. And now you're just so incredibly drawn to and in love with this living person. And you know what you do going out? You start, sometimes it's sudden, but I'll tell you, sometimes it's over a period of time. You start finding yourself, you are anticipating, you are expecting goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you know what's going to happen then when he can't see you no more? You're dwelling in this house forever. That ain't a total loss. Okay, brethren, all right, back to 10. 25. When the whirlwind passes by and the wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Now that whirlwind right there is the storms of your life. Now I've got a question for you. Are you in any storms right now? I'll tell you, all of that complication, being caught in that cobweb of, of, of getting a little bit of what I deserve in that judgment and that... In that uh, discipline and that being see my need for a savior because I can't save myself and I and I had to, that we call it research you know go out there and do more research if you're not ready to surrender all that you are all that you have all that you hope to be in the arms of your father some people get it in prison some people get it in jail some people get it right before they breathe their last breath bleeding to death on the side of a highway well I want to tell you as long as you get it that's what matters as long as you get the oh, Jesus loves me this I know and you start seeing that he bought for you everlasting life and eternal life and I want to tell you if anybody's getting this because somebody else is praying for him somebody, somebody is praying for you that does, is not praying for you with any hidden agenda that's right. somebody that's praying effectively because if somebody is walking in the love of God that's the people who get all their prayers answered we receive what we ask because we keep His commandment and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. People that are forgiving the offenders. There's no glory without transgression. That's Proverbs 19.11. The glory of man is to overlook a transgression. There's, there's no transgression, there's no glory. It's the people that are overlooking transgression, walking through the love of God. And you've got to pray through this privately. So anybody you resent, I would just encourage you to say, God, I don't want this in my heart. Let me see them with your eyes. And then when you start praying for them, nobody may not know you had anything to do with it, but they start getting born again. The Spirit of God's all over them. The demons leave and that person's called to preach. You know, and they're out there laying their life down for somebody else in and out of the prisons and all over the place because they're in love with sinners. Because they know exactly, I know exactly what I am without Him. But I'm waking up to what I am with Him. I like to overcome Him better than getting overcome. That's right. And that's exactly what you're realizing right now. You become to Him the reward of His suffering. 
When you start overcoming by the blood of the Lamb, the word of the testimony, living not your own life, earthly life, even unto death, so your portion is not in this life anymore. Okay, now this whirlwind. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Chapter 7. 7 is the number of wholeness. 8 is the new beginning. All right, 7. I, I really want to encourage you in your own time, go camp out in Matthew 6. And, and what will happen in your life is Matthew 6, 6 will become Matthew 7, 7. And I'm not going to go into what that means, but remember, Matthew 6, 6 becomes Matthew 7, 7. You go look it up yourself. All right, so now we're done got out of 6, and here we are in 7. Uh, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Is there a lot of people saying, Lord, Lord? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every street corner's got a church. Every church sings a different tune. Some say Jesus just arrived. Others say He's coming soon. Some will drag you in. Some will kick you out. Seem self-righteous and absurd. They all disagree, yet at the same time claim authority in the same book, saying it's God's Word. <coughs> The devil appears as an angel of light. Evil dresses up like good. Claim they're serving you, Jesus. Well, Lord, I know you wish they would. Seems your plan of salvation, Lord, has been misunderstood. I'm beginning to see what you mean in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. The devil appears as an angel of light. So there's many people saying, Lord, Lord. And just because somebody's talking, Jesus, and, and, and we're, not, we're observing, it's observation, not evaluation. We're observing and we're learning, but we'll never take that gavel. See that broken gavel right there? That means you don't use it anymore. That means you're not sitting in judgment of other people for good or bad. And we're learning to get set free from, from uh, he's good and he's bad and he's wrong and he's right. Now we defer to the only judge who's just showing absolute mercy and you want, you want your friends to get in on it because you're getting on it. He's getting those warts off of you and he's getting the warts off the whole human race, by the way. All right, so what he's doing is, um, is he, he is saying that that just because you say, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean you're in the kingdom of heaven. But he wants to tell us who does. Those who do the will of my Father. All right, now, the kingdom of heaven forever. The heaven, this is all passing away. The earth's passing away. We're all on the Titanic. His kingdom will endure. His word endures forever and ever. Eternal life and all that stuff uh, that can't be understood. But what is the will of God? Because I want to do it. Now, he's saying right now, you've got to do his will. It's not do right to be right. You do right because you are right. You are right because He's making you right. All right, now what is the will? And it's going to be really simple so you don't, you don't have to listen to, to our teaching or anything else to get it. Do you want to do the will of God or do you just want to say, Lord, Lord, when your heart's far from Him? Then it's a closed book and you just want to hurry up and get out of the Bible studies and go out there and tell dirty jokes and cuss and scorn and backbite and whine and complain and everything while you kill yourself. But when you start coming into the light and you start getting into the Word and you start letting Him love you, He starts writing His law on your heart and something's changing about you. Not only is your anticipator getting calibrated toward redemption, not destruction, because you're not wicked anymore calling God a liar. You're walking on the path of righteousness. You see it the 12th day of the month, uh, Proverbs 12, 5. Uh, he gives his definition of righteousness. He said righteousness is right thinking. When your thoughts that you choose, you can't listen to those toxic thoughts. You can't keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest there. So those darts are going to come, but you're not going to entertain them because you're entertaining Him. He's filling you. Not, there's not room in this house for them. Okay, all right. So now the truth, the truth is setting you free. And, uh, and I want to do His will today. What is your will? 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Raymond, would you read it? Now listen carefully. This is the will of God. Did y'all hear what he said? He didn't say it's, it's God's will that you quit drugging or cussing or chewing or spitting or puffing. Or... He said God's will is that you give thanks. Can you do that? Only you can do that for you. I can't do it for you. I only got one heart to watch over and it's not yours. And the one who created me with the ability to think knows my thoughts. Am I thanking him in there? Give thanks in all things? 
Now we call it thank you therapy. You're going to be out of here a lot longer than you're in here. As long as you're in here, it's but by a breath. You're going to be out of here a lot longer than you're in here. Fear not. Why not? Enjoy the time you got left. How can you do it? Two words. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your love that never ends. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for being our dearest friend. You're going to be out of here a lot longer than you're in here. As long as you're in here, it's but by a... You're going to be out of here a lot longer than you're in here. Fear not. Why not enjoy the time you got left? If you'll just not come off those two words, I might be up all night, but I'm not going to be up all night worrying about my son or my daughter or my friends. That's right. I'm going to be up all night thanking you. And I have to deny myself to do it because my emotions are screaming you're not faithful. But I'm through following the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and boastful pride of life. And I'll tell you what, it's time my body became my servant, not me, its servant. This terrible taskmaster, I'm not negotiating with it anymore. I ain't eating that. I don't feel like going and getting exercise today. No matter what you feel like, I'm not even going to give you any credibility. It's non-negotiable. I'm going to that gym. I'm through negotiating. This body's finding out it ain't boss. And you know what's happening? You're a spirit. You live in a body and you have a soul. You mind your emotions. And here's the entire story of the Exodus in the Old Testament. You're possessing the land and the land that you possess is your body and soul and mind. And your spirit man is overcoming and he's, the Lord Jesus Christ comes to live in you and he comes into your Egypt with his harsh taskmaster Pharaoh who's Satan and the Lord Jesus Christ who is the Moses and Joshua in you. He comes and as you follow him, he drives those Canaanite nations off the land. There goes jealousy. There goes greed. There goes lust. There goes crystal meth. There goes alcohol. There goes all that stuff I was trying to quit doing. Jesus is driving off the land and now I can say no to this body that's been controlling me as it's been destroyed all my life. Because I was born a crack baby. Yeah. And I couldn't help it until I saw the light. Amen. Now who gets the glory for that? huh? All right. Matthew said we've got to keep going. We've got ten minutes. Yeehaw, it's just right. So we're going to do the will of God, which is give thanks, right? All right, now verse 24. Therefore, now let's go back. Let's keep going. 22. Not everyone says to me, 21, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And 23, and then Jesus will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. All right, and 24. Therefore, whoever hears, now here's the wind of Proverbs we saw. He said, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain descends, the flood came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand, and the wind and rain and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now, you're not going to avoid storms. Let me tell you why the wind comes. That storm in your life, Isaiah 45, 22, they who wait upon the Lord, He will renew their strength, they'll mount up with wings as eagles, run and not weary, uh, walk and not faint. An eagle. This is the eagle's nest right here. An eagle senses the storm before there's any indication it's coming. And when that eagle senses the storm, he starts getting, she start, he, she starts getting excited. Because when those winds start raging, that eagle will turn and face it. And the very storm that's coming that all the other critters are hiding from is the very storm that lifts that eagle. That eagle will raise its wings and face the storm. And that storm, it doesn't fly. He rests. And that storm and that wind that's sent to destroy will lift it. And he flies higher than all the other birds and sparrows and everything. All right, when the storm is stirring in your life, face it. Now, you've got to personally pray through this. He's there to help you do it, okay? 
the storms of life were devastating me. I was lost in the valley of the shadow of death, about as low as a man can be. And then I heard a still small voice calling out for me. I received his love. I received his grace. I received his mercy. I received his faith. Now you, we are free as the wind, soaring like an eagle with our friend. We're free. Yes, we're free. Free as the wind. Love is lifting you and me. The truth is setting us free. Oh, what a joy it brings. When you ain't anti-anything. <clears throat> now, do you see that? That's why it's so important that you attend to His words and incline your ears to His sayings. You read in Proverbs 5. Let this book of the law, Joshua, not depart from you. Keep this in your mind. Now, you've got to spend time in eating the bread of life through this Word every single day because it keeps your night goggles clean where you can see to walk in this, through, through the storms of this world. <clears throat> now, oftentimes, God's setting the stage you know, in order for you to let Him witness through you. Not be a witness for Jesus. Let Jesus witness through you. Let your light shine, not try to make it shine. All right, self-effort is treason. Treason is the reason. It's, his, it's like the rooster who thinks the sun comes up to hear him crow. It's like, I'm not the center of the universe and neither are you. Whatever time brings your way, time's going to take it away. Friend, family, foe, come and go. Ain't nothing here here to stay. Have you noticed? We're straining on the gnat and swallowing the camel. It's the way we've been living our life, making something out of nothing, nothing out of something. How blind can we be living in a panic, spitting the Atlantic? We take ourselves way too seriously. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now listen, listen. This is an Ecclesiastes. Living under the S-U-N is all vanity. You see this in Proverbs 17, 24, the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. When your portion is in this life that's passing away, how can you, there's no way you're going to win because it's passing away. You're scared to death of the inevitable? The inevitable is your body's going to die. How are you going to make friends with living until you make friends with dying? Physically dying. So when your portion's not in this life, if you're living under the S-U-N, it is. Get all you can, can all you get, sit on it, make your money, get your new car, get you this, get you that, die me my life. Now, things that are higher, things that are nobler have allured your sight. And you're hastening to Him, hastening glad and free, Jesus, greatest, highest, I'm coming to Thee. And you're drawing, He's drawing you. And He begins to recalibrate your anticipator because you know you got cosmic backing. You know this entire universe is serving you because you're serving Him. And you've been living your life, the crack baby, corrupt rebellion against Christ's kingdom, kicking against the goad, defying nature, the I, me, my lie, I want to do it my way. And then when you yield all that you are, all that you have, all that you hope to be in the arms of His love, now, instead of having cosmic resistance, and that's why you want to use drugs, you don't have any peace. You're trying to get it out of a bottle, and you know it, it's worse, it always betrays you. Anything and everything is going to betray you but Him. Amen. All right, now, now you've got, you're developing this incredible confidence in this person who is Emmanuel, God with us, and He's come to live inside of you, intimately one with you. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, you're one spirit with Him. And that's why you have the power within. Greater is He who is in me than he that's in this world. Right. And now you're overcoming by the incredible grace and strength that He provides because you're doing one thing. You are surrendering all in the arms of His love. And you just got to be willing to do that. And that's the only thing you bring to the table, all right? All right, now, now <coughs> you are finding yourself at peace. Yeah. And living under the S-U-N, Ecclesiastes, is all vanity. But living under the S-O-N, this is Song of Solomon. Living under the S-O-N will restore your sanity. <laughs> okay, this is a good one to leave on. What about your future? All right, we're fixing to close our meeting and you're going to go out there and, and let your light shine in the world and all. Did you know life can be F-U-N? Yes. <laughs> you can be worry-free knowing all is going to be okay because here's what you've done. If you haven't done it, I'd encourage you to do it now. Go ahead and let go. Go ahead and let go of what you will have to let go of one day anyway. That doesn't mean turn your back on your children. 
that means you don't have to possess your children anymore because you got Him. Amen. And now you're loving other people on a non-clinging basis and they don't have to measure up to your expectations so you don't walk around disappointed all the time. And through the Spirit, Galatians 5.22, gentleness, joy, patience, meekness, temperance, faith, and love is flowing out of you like an undefiled, pure river. And that's what this world is starved for. And when you're going through the storm and you're facing it, you're not fighting it. Don't resist evil with evil. Return insult for insult. Bless those that curse you. When you're facing the storm, you've got a revelation that storm's lifting you. And that very thing that's been sent to harm you, you might miss the field goal. Well, God's setting up something else, all right? And, you want to, and so you don't fret over it. You're not fretting over evil. Do you? you just keep delighting in Him. You just keep doing your thank you therapy. And don't come off those two words, thank you. And I'll tell you, and everything changes. And you, and you may feel down and out, but I'm telling you, the, the price you pay for the light of day is the night of being blue. Darkness and despair everywhere, but there's hope for me and you. No valley, no mountain, no mountain, no view. The price you pay for the light of day is the night of being, being blue. So don't cons consider it a strange thing, these fiery trials, okay? All right, we're learning, aren't we? So will you, will you do your thank you therapy for you? Will you just keep doing that? Will you just keep honoring Him? Will you just keep loving Him? And, you know, will, you, will you just keep letting Him do His incredible miracle inside of you? Finally, brethren, we enter this world hanging upside down. Slap you on the behind. Then they pass you around. I spent a lifetime on a merry-go-round until you're right side up with your feet on the ground. When you're right side up, you live inside out. When He lives in you, then you know what we're shouting about. Yeah. <laughs> Greater is He who's in me than He who's in the world without. When you're right side up, you live inside out. <clears throat> now, here's the invitation, brethren. Those of you who will allow the Lord Jesus Christ to love this troubled world through you, those of you who are willing to be a light in a dark place. Those who are willing to let that river of life and love flow through you to other hurting human beings. Stand up and get out of here and go do it. I love you. Thank you for joining us. This is Bob McLeod. If you'd like more information concerning Our Father's Arms, you can write us at Our Father's Arms, Post Office Box 1158, Jacksonville, Alabama 36265, or visit us on the web at www.ourfathersarms.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ continue to give us eyes to see the unseen. Amen. Jesus loves you, do you know?